My sister has come over from Mallorca to visit and we had a couple of days of cozy rain and hail so I decided to make a classic lasagna. It's also a tribute to Emilia Romagna that has suffered a devastating flood this past week with 14 people losing their lives and mass destruction. The classic recipe uses green pasta, a rich ragu and bechamel sauce. I picked fresh spinach from our garden and cooked it until just wilted before chopping finely. You could blend it for a smoother result, but I couldn't be bothered cleaning the blender for such a small amount. I begin with four and three quarter cups of flour and a little salt. I whisk four eggs and two yolks into the spinach. And then to avoid it all running out of your flour well, just add a little at a time. There's no need to rush. Gently, gradually bring in the flour. I did a culinary exam uh, for Italian cuisine in Parma, which is a city that takes lasagna very seriously. And this is quite a traditional version. However, there will surely be little details that some might debate. Uh, this is just my version, which I was able to make uh, in between Gianfranco napping I have to say, in 13 years of living in Italy, the best lasagna I've ever tasted was made by a talented housewife in Sardegna. So it's not always the town of origin that serves the most memorable dish, but sometimes the woman or man who has made that recipe over and over for loved ones for years.
At this point, if it's a little dry, I add a tiny bit of water, but don't be too liberal or you'll have a sticky dough. After kneading, I leave it to rest covered for 20 minutes. Now for the ragu. For the sofrito of celery, carrot and onion, I want quite a fine chop. Normally I just go quite rustic, but in this case I really want them to be almost imperceptible. You don't want to come across pieces of vegetable in the lasagna, but you need those flavors to contribute sweetness and depth to the background. You can approximate with the quantities, but just add equal parts of all three vegetables. I cook these in a little olive oil until soft but not browned. Some make lasagna with meat and pancetta, others use a mix of meat and salsiccia. I happen to have an amazing local butcher who does very salty, high quality salsiccia sausages. So I'm going to fry off uh, two salsiccia and then add the vegetables and the meat. I like to do the salsiccia or the pancetta separately so it browns and gives the pan all those lovely deep salty flavors, which it wouldn't be capable of doing if it felt crowded by all the wet vegetables. I used 800 grams of meat and two sausages. I like to squeeze the meat between my fingers as I add it because otherwise you get little strings of meat from the grinder and I don't feel they are as nice in the mouth uh, as, as just sort of smaller uh, pieces of, of meat. Um, but that's just my preference. Now I add some wine, about 250 mils, and let that cook for a few minutes. Then I add two cans of crushed tomatoes and fill one can with water, which I also add. Uh, I salt it and then leave to cook on a low heat for two to three hours. Now for the bechamel sauce. We want to start with a roux, which sounds complicated, but really isn't. Just melt 90 grams of butter and meanwhile heat your milk, which we're going to add later. When the butter is melted, add two thirds of a cup of flour and whisk it in so it all comes together into a ball. Then add your hot milk, stirring to amalgamate it all and letting the sauce thicken slightly with a seasoning of salt, nutmeg and pepper. I made the ragu and the bechamel sauce the day before. When I first made the sauce, I used a litre of milk and then the next day when reheating it, I added another half a litre. Now back to the pasta. I cut off a small piece and keep the rest covered under the bowl. A traditional lasagna has many layers, I think seven, and I love a very delicate tender pasta. I'm trying to make these as thin as possible. That woman in Sardegna told me her secret to lasagna, whether using fresh or dry pasta, is to cook it first. Because these sheets are so thin, I only want to drop them into boiling salted water for 30 seconds, one or two at a time, and then place them on a tea towel or a tablecloth. At 
At this point, Guido came in to give me a hand with grating the parmigiano. Guido is helping me by grating the cheese. With this mythical machinery that for me is of common use, but for any foreign person is completely, I don't know, uh, unknown. Therefore, I'll just explain it once for all. If you ever encounter this thing, it's, it's a manual parmesan grater, and you just open this part here, you stick the cheese in the upper part, just put the cheese in here, fill it up, have a piece of cheese in it, then holding it like this, you squeeze it, open the trap door that's underneath, there we go, tap, open, squeeze and turn, squeeze and turn. Every now and then you have to fit the cheese inside, be sure that it doesn't get clogged inside, the music is just about to no. Okay. There you go. Look, look. There you go. Yeah, you should close that one of cheese. I know, but I, it's too cute. Your face of, of your look of satisfaction. Quanti ti piace questo Jejo? I was concentrate. <laughs> Bravissimo, amore. Is this enough? Uh, no, it needs more, more, more. Il pazzisce la mia sorella. Ciao. A te il potere della mia sorella. Grazie. Grazie. Formage. Le fromage. I have my ragu, I have my pasta, my vegetable, and what else? And the parmigiano. Is the oven is on? No, yeah, that's no idea. Up. It's just okay, because okay, I made, okay, it, okay, made okay. it yesterday. It's, it's there's, there's lots of moisture, but it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Wow, this looks very yummy. Lots of cheese. Yeah. You say stop. Si, basta, basta. Okay, and then I have my lovely next layer. Look how beautiful these are. Bellissima. They're, so, they're so um firm, but 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 delicate. Okay, so do you want a pair of scissors? Uh, this is, actually, I'll just cut it with my fingers. Yeah, but if you want the scissors, I can get them. For you. <laughs> Do, 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 do. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Can I eat this piece? No. Why not? We don't. We need it. Yeah, but I need to try if it's good. Mmm. The blava. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Do you want to put on the bechamel? Okay. You should spread around, you know? Yeah, if you sort of 
drape it like that, like go like, yeah, like that. And then it goes out in lines. Oh, look at this! Beautiful! You know it's good if, they say with Pasha, if you can see your fingers on the other side, you should be able to see them. You can use it as a curtain, eventually. <laughs> You want to cut that? Are you able to? That's in the top. Perfect cut. What are we up to now? This was layer number four. Four? Are you sure? No. I think it was five. We can dismount it and see. <laughs> Beautiful. Because the crust on top is so nice and crunchy. Mm. Right. Mm. See? It's bigger. It's bigger. It's bigger. It's bigger. See? Which one are you going for? Okay, that one. Tell me which you want. Yeah, yeah, that, one, that one's good, yeah. I thought it was in line with sure, sure, perfect. the candles and my penis. <laughs> Why? The perfect shot. <laughs> Bravissimo, grazie. 